So as we're, we're starting now the session of the, the all night prayer, but we're gonna begin with something very special tonight from Canada called The Roar. And this is uh, Maggie uh, Baracho. She's from the Father's Heart, um, the yeah, Father's Heart Healing Ministries in Canada. And actually she has to first test her gavel um, to make sure it's not gonna break the pulpit. Um, <laughs> she said she wanted to test her gavel. So um, she's gonna explain to you what we're gonna be doing, but we're gonna be making various um, decrees that the Lord has given um, from Canada. And she's rolled out the red carpet tonight. So get ready to walk down the red carpet. And without further ado. Thank you so much. Okay, can I have this so that I can see? Um, I'm going to just open with prayer for a minute. So, Father, I thank you. I thank you, God, that this roar is your idea, Father. I thank you, Father, that you have good plans tonight, Father. And, Father, I just submit to you right now, and I ask that your Holy Spirit come with the breaker anointing into this place tonight to do all that is in your heart to do. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. There's a new sound in the earth, and it is the sound of the roar. It's the roar of the Lion of Judah. And tonight we are going to roar because the Lion of Judah is roaring. He is roaring over Israel and he's roaring over the nations. We are roaring in agreement with what our Father is saying and doing in Israel and in the nations of the earth. Several years ago in a dream I had... I saw myself leading a roar in front of a, a group of people in like a church. And at, in the dream, the ceilings broke open as the people hit the floor. And I knew they were demonic strongholds that were being broken. And the Lord showed me that the roar was an acronym for R-O-A-R, the Restoration of Apostolic Reformation. Today is a day of restoration. God is restoring the full apostolic mantle to the body of Christ. And with that mantle comes the manifestation of governmental authority and a greater revelation of the resurrection power of Jesus Christ. This roar event tonight is about enforcing the victory that has already been won through the finished work of Jesus Christ. We are not roaring to get victory, we're roaring from victory, amen? Our enemies have already been defeated, disarmed, and dismantled. We are enforcing the victory from the place of rest. We are so blessed that we get to partner with the Father and do what he's doing tonight we're not trying to do something for God. Rather, we're letting God do something through us. Amen. I want to acknowledge and welcome the angelic host that are here and that are ready to perform the decree of the word of the Lord. We're here in Jerusalem in Israel, and I want to express how blessed and grateful I am to be here with the Canadian team to release this very strategic and intentional roar of the Lord. To Israel, the Father's beloved Jewish nation, on behalf of Canada and alongside many nations, I honor you, I bless you, and I speak resurrection life over you. I welcome and bless all the nations present as we align ourselves in agreement and in union with the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, we welcome your breakthrough anointing. Heavenly Father, thank you that you are here and you are orchestrating the beginning of a new era for the restoration of all things. Tonight I'll be conducting some prophetic acts, releasing prophetic words, issuing divine decrees, and together we are going to release a series of corporate roars. I'm going to be using this gavel, 
and I will decree a thing so it can be established. So when I make a decree, I will bring the hammer down like this and announce sealed. And if you agree, I want you to say sealed. So can we all say sealed together? Sealed. Okay. So let's try one. I decree that tonight's roar will release the Lord of the breakthrough into Israel and into the nations. Sealed. So before we, amen, going to happen. Before we roar, I want to give you some instruction on how to roar. Because when we roar, it's not a bunch of noise. It's not a scream from your throat. It comes deep from your belly. So how we will do the roar when it's time to do it, we'll do one, two, three. You'll take a deep breath in and then we'll roar in unity together. And there will be um, a statement that I will make on what we're roaring for so that we can be focused on that and that becomes our point of contact as we release the sound of the roar. Okay, so we're gonna try one, okay? So let's roar in agreement that tonight will shift the atmosphere over Israel. One, two, three, breath in. Okay, good job. All right, we're off to a good start. So before I get started in all this, the Lord wants me to set some things right in the spirit realm between the nation of Canada and the nation of Israel. Two weeks ago, the Lord showed me Canada and Israel in a vision. I only knew I was coming about three and a half weeks ago, and the Lord immediately gave me a vision, and in a vision, he showed me two neckties. One of them was the nation of Canada, you can see here with the maple leaf, and the other one was Israel, and you can see there's um, Star David and different things on there. And when I looked at it in the, in the vision, there was a knot. There was a knot. See that knot? And I heard the Father say, there's no flow and there's no alignment of my spirit between these nations. And he said, Maggie, you need to break this ungodly soul tie, this ungodly knot between the nation of Israel and Canada. And he said that through this roar event, through this trip to Jerusalem, there would be a breaking and a severing of this ungodly knot between Israel and Canada. And I did not know how this was gonna happen, but today I went on a tour to the Wailing Wall. I'm telling you, the Lord knows what he's doing. While we were at the Wailing Wall, the Holy Spirit spoke to me. I did not know this would happen. And he led me along with another intercessor from Canada to address this ungodly knot. And while we were there together at the Wailing Wall, we repented on behalf of the nation of Canada. And we repented for the formation of this ungodly knot. And we repented for and confessed the sins of ignorance, indifference, and apathy from the nation of Canada towards Israel. We repented on behalf of our government, the people of, of Canada, and the church. And we asked for forgiveness. And we asked the Father to give us his heart for Israel. We asked him to give Canada his heart for Israel. And I believe in the spirit realm that knot was broken. Amen. 
I declare that today the ungodly soul tie, the ungodly knot between Canada and Israel has been broken and severed and has been completely unloosed. I declare the blood of Jesus is cleansing the relationship between Canada and Israel, and I declare the release of a fresh new kingdom covenant relationship between Canada and Israel. And in the spirit, I saw the father take both these ties. And I saw him do this. mingling these two nations and then he took it and he put it around his neck like this and he said see now there's alignment and now my spirit can flow between Canada and Israel amen amen a new kingdom relationship is being formed and it is for the Father's purpose for Canada and Israel to be aligned for his glory for this new era. So together, we're going to all release a corporate roar to agree with a new kingdom alignment between Israel and the nation of Canada. Okay? Breathe in. Roar! decree the father is establishing the alignment of a new kingdom connection between Canada and Israel sealed and I decree the spirit of God will flow freely between Canada and Israel for the establishing and healing and releasing of nations into their God-given destinies sealed amen you guys are good at this Thank you, Father, for the shift that is taking place right now as you align nations into their God-given destinies. Amen. Amen. Genesis 12, 3, God says to Abraham, I will bless those who bless you and I will curse those who treat you with contempt. All the families on earth will be blessed through you. Jesus, the Savior of the world, the King of kings, the Lamb of God, the Lion of Judah, the firstborn of many sons and daughters, came to earth through this bloodline, through this nation of Israel, God's first nation before any other nation. And right now, we gather in unity as many nations represented to release words of blessing upon the nation of Israel. We gather to roar over Israel as we come into agreement with the Father's plans for redemption and restoration to Jerusalem and for Israel. Israel, we honor you as the one whom God chose to be the spiritual womb, the original womb for the Father heart of God to be birthed into the earth. We bless you because you were God's choice and you were God's idea. We are grateful to you, Israel. Today we honor you as the one whom God chose to break open the spiritual womb and break open the way so that through you, we, the families and nations in the earth, could be blessed. To all those within Israel, I speak resurrection, life, and freedom into your spirit, soul, and body. We receive you, we bless you, and we acknowledge your place at the forefront of God's plans and purposes in the earth. Truly, the Father has blessed you to be a blessing to many. 
and Israel, I declare the King of glory has come to release a breaker anointing upon you to break open your ancient gates, to open the floodgates for restoration and reconciliation. And I release Micah 2, 12, 13 over you, which reads, I will surely assemble all of you, O Jacob. I will surely gather the remnant of Israel. I will put them together like sheep of the fold, like a flock in the midst of their pasture they shall make a loud noise because of so many people the one who breaks open will come up before them they will break open pass through the gate and go out by it their king will pass before them with the lord at their head and I say to you, Israel, lift up your heads, O you gates, and let the king of glory come in. And Israel, I see the father removing the chains of religion and the claims of a false identity that have held you captive. And I declare to you, Israel, this is the season to come up from your wilderness and to lean upon your beloved. I see the Holy Spirit in Israel, and he is moving upon a new generation that will exchange the old for the new. I see a spiritual revolution in Israel as the Holy Spirit begins to illuminate and renew mindsets. And in a vision two weeks ago, I saw a generation of youth walking in the streets of Israel, and they were all walking with their heads down, and they were focused on reading this little book. They all had the same little book that they were reading, and they were intently reading, and they were walking. And their eyes were look, looking down, focused on this book, and suddenly the Holy Spirit appeared, and he began to drop one by one a new little book on top of the old one as each of them were reading and I watched these youth as they began to read this new book and as they began to read it I saw their minds begin to light up to become illuminated with light it was like the flip of a switch the lights came on and I saw black shadows coming out of their heads and falling to the ground and I saw that these black shadows were generational strongholds spiritual mind blockers and ungodly yokes that were falling from their minds and I understood that this new book this new script that they were reading was the new covenant and they were reading and receiving the new covenant with a revelatory anointing of the Holy Spirit and I saw the Holy Spirit in Israel is moving upon a generation of youth and they are exchanging the old from the new and the Lord is saying this generation is the promised generation and the Lord says a remnant is rising in Israel to receive their inheritance Amen. Israel, I declare that today you are being released from a heavy garment that has weighed you down for generations. And I see this garment being loosed and removed from your shoulders, and it is falling to the ground. And I see you being fitted into clean white linens, and you are being scented with fresh perfumes. And I declare, Israel, you are shifting into a new season. And I see your sons and daughters rising into the realm of a revelation and clarity for you are stepping into a season of illumination and transformation. I declare to you a brand new day. Watch now as God moves upon you in a whole new way. He is releasing his breath to blow your enemies away. Amen. So right now, together, we're going to release a corporate roar over Israel. We're roaring with the Lion of Judah to agree with the fullness of the Father's plans for restoration in Israel. So we're going to start with the first one. One, two, three. Breathe in and roar!
decree the floodgates are opening for the promises of God to be fill, fulfilled in Israel. Sealed. Sealed. And I decree the Spirit of God is moving in the streets of Israel to raise up a promised generation that will step into their inheritance. Sealed. Sealed. Amen. 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 So good. So good. Aliyah is a Hebrew word that means to ascend. The word Aliyah commonly refers to the Jews who immigrate or return to Israel. In Amos 9, 14 to 15, it reads, I will bring my people Israel back from exile. They will rebuild the ruined cities and live in them. They will plant vineyards and drink their wine. They will make gardens and eat their fruit. I will plant Israel in their own land, never again to be uprooted from the land I have given them, says the Lord your God. Recently, I had a vision, and in the spirit, I saw the father standing by a window. And he said, Maggie, come look. Look out the window. And when I looked, I saw the opening of a forest. And in the opening, I saw men, women, and youth emerging from the forest, from the wilderness, and they were headed our way. And I knew immediately these were the long-awaited prodigals. They were coming up out of the wilderness for they had been stripped down of pride and they had been humbled. They were coming home and they were returning to the Father. And both me and the Father were weeping. As I received this vision, I took it as a sign for the prodigals that I was praying for in my own life. But as I meditated on this vision, God suddenly revealed to me that this is actually happening on a much bigger scale. The father began to share his heart with me regarding his first prodigals, the prodigals of Israel. And I felt the father's love for the prodigals of Israel flood over me. He has not forgotten them, nor has he forgotten his promise in Ezekiel 36, where he says, For I will take you out of the nations. I will gather you from all the countries and bring you back into your own land. Then you will live in the land I gave your ancestors. Father has longed for the day that his beloved Israel would return to the land he gave their ancestors. And now we as the nations of the earth have the privilege and the honor to come into agreement with the Father's plans for Aliyah. To call out across the nations to those of Jewish ancestry and to say, come home and receive the Father's promise for your inheritance. So together we're going to release a corporate roar. Last night we released some roars, but tonight we're going to release a corporate roar together. That roar is going to go across the earth to break open the way, to prepare the way for Aliyah. Are you ready? One, two, three. Zoom 
with uh, Kate, the first things I saw in the spirit with the roar was the mass unlocking and breaking open of spiritual gates. I saw gates breaking open at the threshold of nations, and the Lord said, this is the hour for the harvesting of souls, and this is the hour for the harvesting of nations. I saw the unlocking and breaking open of ancient gates, spiritual gateways into nations that have been locked up, held back, and reserved to be opened for this time. Now is the time for the opening of these ancient gateways. For when they open, they will release an unveiling and a revealing of the sons of the, and daughters of God in the earth. Behold, I'm coming, says the Lord, and I have come to separate the tares from the wheat and the impure for the holy. For this is a time of a great harvest and a time of great weeping, or reaping rather. A great reaping. I declare Amos 9, 13 over the nations of the earth, which reads, Behold, the days are coming, says the Lord, when the plowman shall overtake the reaper and the treader of grapes, him who sows seed. The mountains shall drip wine with sweet wine, and all the hills shall flow with it. So we're going to release a corporate roar in agreement for the breaking open of spiritual gates, for the harvest of souls and the harvest of nations. You ready? Okay. One, two, three. Roar! Amen. I decree the gates for the harvest fields are opening wide across the nations. Sealed. And I decree the opening of the ancient gates for the harvesting of nations. Sealed. And I decree the rising and the unveiling of, righteous, of a righteous army of sons and daughters across the earth. Sealed. And I decree the global intercessors and the angelic host are being deployed to seal and to usher in this unprecedented harvest. Sealed. Sealed. Amen. 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 To the nations of the earth, the Father says, since the very beginning, the enemy has sought to weaken you by attacking and oppressing your spiritual backbones. But today, the Father says, today I am here to strengthen and to heal the backbones of nations, for they have become weak and brittle because of the pressure and the oppression of the enemy. And the Father says, I'm here to strengthen the nations, to infuse strength into spiritual backbones through a roar of victory and a roar of justice. And I saw the Lord inserting lightning rods into these backbones to provide stability and protection. And the Lord says, today I'm raising up my governmental apostles and prophets from within the nations, for together they are the backbones that will shift and align nations back to my heart. Today I am releasing to them the breaker anointing to shatter strongholds, agendas, and assignments over cities and over nations. Today I am releasing them into a new realm and dimension of authority and power to usher into the earth my plans, my purposes for this new era. So I decree an infusion of strength is flowing into spiritual backbones of God's government in the nations. Sealed. And I decree the Father's justice is blowing into the nations through his government to expose, to root out, to throw down, to establish, and to build according to his plans. Sealed. And I declare where the enemy said abort, the Lord says birth. Where the enemy said oppress, the Lord says rejoice. And where the enemy says confuse, the Lord says order. And I hear the Father say, I am restoring my righteous order into the earth. And I declare the word of the Lord from Joel 3, 12 to 
17, which reads, Let the nations be wakened and come to the valley of Jehoshaphat, for there I will sit to judge all the surrounding nations. Put in the sickle, for the harvest is ripe. Come, go down, for the wine press is full. The vats overflow, for their wickedness is great. Multitudes, multitudes in the valley of decision, for the day of the Lord is near in the valley of decision. The sun and moon will grow dark, and the stars will diminish their brightness. The Lord also will roar from Zion and utter his voice from Jerusalem. The earth and the heavens will shake, but the Lord will be a shelter for his people and the strength of the children of Israel. And you shall, so you shall know that I am the Lord your God, dwelling in Zion, my holy mountain. Then Jerusalem shall be holy, and no alien shall ever pass through her again. And in the spirit, I saw the Father's divine orders being issued from the courts of heaven. And they were being released into the earth like a tsunami. And I saw their fulfillment coming like a holy tidal wave that has come to both cleanse and to destroy. And the Lord says, you will see it in the headlines of major news outlets, one after the other. And people will say, this has never happened before. We never saw this coming. How is this even possible? And the Lord says, this is the time of unprecedented happenings. Things you haven't seen before or ever considered. These are the type of things that will occur. And these happenings will be like parables that significance for these last days in this day i am revealing wisdom wisdom to interpret wisdom to discern and wisdom to create for i am placing the sword of solomon in the house in the mouth of my kings Woo! a great shift is taking place in the foundation of nations. The whole earth is shaking and shifting as the Father realigns and restores his righteous order. And I saw scores of angels assembled in the heavenly courtroom and they were waiting, ready to be released upon the sound of his decrees. This angelic host were warrior angels with piercing eyes and a fierce presence, for I saw they were assigned to carry and release the fear of the Lord. And I saw the Father raising up an army of court-appointed magistrates. I saw them standing in the courtrooms of heaven, and their notebooks were open with pen in hand, and they were ready to write the decree and write the vision so others could run with it to release its fulfillment into the, their designated spheres of influence and authority. Acts 3.19, repent therefore and be converted that your sins may be blotted out so that times of refreshing may come from the presence of the Lord and that he the Father may send Jesus Christ who was preached to you before whom heaven must receive until the times of restoration of all things which God has spoken by the mouth of his holy prophets since the world began. This is that time for the restoration of all things. The timeline of the Father is shifting and accelerating as sons and daughters merge with the Father heart of God and begin to partner with him in the earth. So we're going to roar in agreement that this is the time for the restoration of all things. We're going to roar in agreement that this is the time for the Father's righteous order to be fully ushered into the earth.
The women are going to like this next part. Our Father is raising up spiritual mothers all across the earth. He is establishing and releasing a movement of mothering that will release a movement of fathering. A fresh wind is blowing upon the nations and riding high upon this wind is the spirit of Elijah. And I see the spirit of Elijah mantled upon an army of prophetic and apostolic women whom God has ordained to prepare the way and to release a movement of fathering into the earth. This is a line to Malachi 4, 4 and 5, which reads, Behold, I will send you Elijah the prophet before the coming of the great and dreadful day of the Lord, and he will turn the hearts of the fathers to the children and the hearts of the children to their fathers. Least I come and strike the earth with a curse. And I just say those who have ears to hear, hear what the Lord is saying in this. Daughters of God, it is time for you to step into your divine inheritance. This is the hour to partner with your heavenly father for you are here for such a time as this. Amen. We are all going to be dancing across this red carpet. I brought this red carpet from Canada. The Lord has a plan for this. But first we're going to bless the women and we're going to get to that. I heard the Lord say it's time for the queens of the kingdom to arise. God is highlighting the queen's quarters. And this is the hour that our father is rolling out the red carpet for the queens in the kingdom. And I want all the ladies to stand if you're not already standing. And to all those who are listening to my voice, women, I want to picture yourself stepping onto this spiritual red carpet because the Lord wants me to release a word over you. Just close your eyes. Picture yourself stepping onto the red carpet. So I'm going to release that word. I see a company a prophetic and of apostolic women rising from across the nations of the earth. And I see them emerging from out of their cocoons. They are emerging as monarch butterflies to rule and to reign in their spheres of influence. And I bless the women that God is raising up and placing onto the forefront of what he is doing. I declare the apostolic mothers are rising from within the nations. These are the spiritual Deborahs, the warrior women. And I declare the long-awaited Deborahs, Deborahs are here. And they are rising through the ranks with a warrior anointing. And they are the lionesses that will roar over cities and roar over regions and roar over nations. This is the beginning of the movement of mothering and nothing can stop what the father is doing these are the fathers that god is using to overturn the plans of the enemy and to return regions and cities and nations back into their god-given identity and destiny and the lord says ladies the shift rests upon you for the harvesting of nations the fear of the lord rests upon these ones as they step out and step and I hear the Father say, these are my golden girls. <laughs> and I see, and I see an older generation of women rising to wrap their arms around a younger generation of women. And the Father is so pleased for he has waited for this hour for so long because ladies, you are the key to your name. Ladies, you are the game changers because it's the movement of mothering that will release the movement of fathering. A generation of mothers set apart for such a time as this. Daughters of God, this is your time to emerge. And I see the Father begin to turn things upside down and inside out to reveal the resurrection life that has been growing on the inside of this holy remnant army. And I hear the Father say, these ones did not give up and they did not give in. They believed even as they struggled to hold on. And the Father is gathering these faithful ones and I hear him say, I with this I can work with their faith to explode my heart into the nations and I saw the Holy Spirit coming like a mother Woo! I declare the apostolic mothers are coming with a download of the mother of for they carry 
horses begin to emerge and these war horses are assembled with fresh bits in their mouths and they are fresh and they are ready and they are raring to go. These war horses are fearless and they are fierce. These are the prayer warriors, the apostolic intercessors for nations. And although they're fierce and full of a holy fury, they carry the law of kindness on their tongues. And when they speak, I saw the fruit of the Spirit flowing from their mouths. It is the kindness of God that leads us to repentance. It is the kindness of the Father that will turn the hardest of hearts to run into the Father's bosom. The Father is commissioning apostolic intercessors in a warrior anointing, and I see him positioning them in different harvest fields across the nations, and they are there to mark and seal the souls and the nations that are ripe for harvest. God is sending out a call for the, for the spiritual mothers to step onto the red carpet, for this is a red carpet season. This red carpet is unfurling before you, and it's an invitation to proceed. It's an invitation to take the leap into your purpose and into your destiny for this season and for this time. Amen. So together, we're going to release a corporate roar to call the spiritual mothers to arise from the four corners of the earth to fully take their place. Are you ready? Come on. Roar! given a metal spike, a metal spike about this tall, metal, had four sides on it, it's a railway spike. The Lord had me write the word inheritance on all four sides of it. I did not know what I would do, but I was to put it in my suitcase and bring it to Jerusalem. So I'm here for the first time this week. We came to the conference. We thought we were staying in a hotel here in Jerusalem, but we, when we arrived, most of our team we're told we were to stay in Bethlehem. I didn't realize because I don't know much about Israel, to be honest, before coming here. The city of Bethlehem is occupied by Palestinian authority and not by Jewish, Jewish authority. And I asked the Lord, why are we staying in Bethlehem? What are you doing? Why weren't we staying in Jerusalem? Why was this happening? The Lord began to reveal and say some things to me this week that stunned me. He started to reveal his heart and he said, in the physical realm, parts of the land of Israel are divided and occupied by non-Jewish authority. Just as the body of Christ are divided with some parts occupied by other authority other than Jesus Christ, a, a land divided and a body divided, it was a prophetic thing God was showing me. And then the Lord said this, take the metal stake with the words inheritance written on it and put it in the ground of the occupied territory in Bethlehem as a sign to claim the full inheritance for the land of Israel according to my original covenant. Drive the stake into the ground, amen as a sign that I will drive out the enemies of Israel and bring them to fully occupy and possess their land. And then he said, I want you to claim the full inheritance for my body, the church, so they can fully possess and occupy my covenant promises for them as sons and daughters. And so we did that two days ago. 
We hammered the metal spike, the stake in the ground in Bethlehem as a prophetic sign that Israel will fully possess and occupy the land the Father has promised them as an inheritance and as a sign that the body of Christ will fully possess and occupy their inheritance as sons and daughters. Full restoration, full manifestation of apostolic government. We hammered it in together under a pomegranate tree. The pomegranate is a metaphor for the richness of the promised land in Israel. And the pomegranate is the only fruit with a crown. It is very strategic that God chose the city of Bethlehem for us to put the stake in the ground for inheritance. Bethlehem means house of bread, connected to Jesus, the bread of life. Bethlehem is the birthplace of Jesus Christ, the King of Kings. Bethlehem is also the place where David was anointed King of Israel. God is restoring his government. He is releasing a kingly anointing. And interestingly enough, today I was on a tour in Bethlehem, and God made an interesting confirmation. I met a man who was newly, he was the newly elected mayor of Bethlehem, and I actually, along with a couple of our ministry team members, we anointed him and prayed over him and blessed him as the new mayor of Bethlehem. <laughs> Crazy. See, God is raising up and anointing kings, the kingly anointing, the apostolic government. Bethlehem is also situated in the territory given to the tribe of Judah. And Jesus is from the lineage of the tribe of Judah. He is the Lion of Judah. And Judah was also the first tribe to take its place in the land of Israel. Amen? Like, this is just too, like, who can put this together? Jesus is the firstborn of many sons and daughters. And our Father is looking for sons and daughters to partner with him to restore his redemptive purposes in the earth. And he wants us to lay claim to our full inheritance in Jesus Christ. So we will roar in agreement for the full inheritance of Israel to possess and occupy their land. Why don't we stand and we'll roar? One, two, three, breath in and roar! And now we'll roar in agreement for the full, for the church to possess and occupy their full inheritance in Christ. called a processional and the word procession means move forward to proceed and I was thinking about this the other day when suddenly the Lord brought to mind a specific scene in the Bible and it was the scene where the children of Israel were at the Red Sea and the Egyptians were coming after them and Moses is crying out to God for help and in Exodus 14 the Lord says to Moses why do you cry out to me? Tell the children of Israel to go forward, but lift up your rod, stretch out your hand over the sea and divide it. And the children of Israel shall go on dry ground through the midst of the sea. God is saying to you right now, why are you crying out to me? You go forward. It's time to proceed. All your enemies have already been defeated, disarmed, and dismantled. The word says, do not weep and do not despair. Lift up your eyes for behold, the lion of Judah goes before you. He has already prepared a new place for you to step into. For this is your season to proceed into the promises that you have been crying out for. Do not look at what the enemy is doing. Rather, look at the one who is clearing a path before you. 
step out and step into your inheritance. So as a prophetic act, we're going to have people come onto the red carpet. If you want to move forward and proceed into your full inheritance as a prophetic act, we want you to come and walk or dance across this red carpet. There are members of our ministry team from Canada that will be on either side of the red carpet to minister to you. So if you are not...